Okay. Okay, so uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Um, this will be about our last service of 2020. And good riddance to that one. <laughs> um, now, it, it may not have uh, sort of um, be a surprise that I'm not clear. Uh, there are certain giveaways. Um, I thought about the word mass wouldn't know it wasn't Claire, because it would have been Claire this morning with the um, uh, presiding over the communion. But Claire's not been well this week, um, she's had the blood of it, and um, fortunately she's, she's getting better, she's slept well. Uh, she is uh, Covid negative, she had the results of that uh, yesterday, which is good news for her, because I know she, as everybody that worries when you get the load at the moment that you think you're passing terrible things on. So uh, we will pray for her to Claire later. Uh, continued uh, recovery. So we're going to use the uh, morning worship. We should be given this if everybody's got access to, to this. Um, I have stepped in at the, the last minute, <laughs> good old me. Um, so I'm actually going to use Claire's sermon as well in some parts as well. So that'll be a good, good fun. Uh, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll come for the, the, the greeting and uh, there will be a joke later. Um, you will all be pleased about that. I know for us the same, I could see us as I saw, well enough thinking he was going to miss out, but now there's a joke later for you. So together on the, 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 the front of the, the sheet, we're going to say the greeting together and the prayer of repentance. I bring to you good news of great joy. Unto us a child is born. And unto us a son is given. Hallelujah. He is Christ the Lord. Alleluia. We worship and adore him. Hallelujah. Hear the words of the angel to Joseph. You should call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. Therefore, let us seek the forgiveness of God through Jesus, the Saviour of the world. Christ, the light of the world, has come to dispel the darkness of our hearts. In his light, let us examine ourselves and confess our sins. Lord of grace and truth, we confess our unworthiness to stand in your presence as your children. We have sinned. The Virgin Mary accepted your call to be the mother of Jesus. Forgive us our disobedience to your will. We have sinned. Your Son, our Saviour, was born in poverty in a manger. Forgive us our greed. Rejection of your ways. We have sinned. The shepherds left their flocks to go to Bethlehem. Forgive our self interest and lack of vision. We have sinned. The wise men followed the star to find Jesus the King. Forgive us our reluctance to seek you. We have sinned. May the Father of all, our, of all mercies cleanse our sins, restore us in his image, and praise the glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, if it feels a little bit uh, uh, joined up in, in various parts, and again it's because, of, because Claire had uh, prepared, so I, I picked this up yesterday afternoon. But it's, it's, I haven't had time to really prepare an amazing job to finish 2020 with. But I was given um, by uh, members of my uh, um, bubble a very expensive cheesy Joe pack of cards. <laughs> I think Chris and I must have bought it because I think it's about 99p for more bargains. It's the best I could do. Now what I would normally do in peacetime is I'd go around and ask you to pick a card. I can't really do that because it's unsafe. I'm going to give you two jokes. These are cheesy jokes, please remember. So, Ian, just give me a number between 1 and 10. I'll count them out and I'll tell you the joke on 10. 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 
So, okay, it's a job for you. Now think about it, listen. Yeah. <laughs> okay? If you have 13 apples in one hand, 10 oranges in the other, what do you have? Big hands. <laughs> oh no, did you get that? Big hands. <laughs> <laughs> the L cheese job, the 99p, is not my fault, okay? It's the best we can do. Um, Eric, shout me a number between 1 and 15. Uh, 12. I should pick two a bit quicker, but never mind. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 12. <laughs> if you know this answer, Eric, say I don't know it so we can build up to the pitch line, okay? Sorry about that. Okay. What do you call a boomerang that doesn't come back? A stick. <laughs> Right, we'll move on. We'll move on on that one. Okay? The best I could do at the time. So, um, we're going to have a, a, a play now of um, In the Bleak in Winter. Um, I understand the people that were involved in the going around the village um, doing carols. Um, this was probably by far the most requested song, which it, Am I surprised about that? I like it. Is it my favourite? I don't know, but it's just really interesting. I understand it's about 75% of people requested this one. So can we play it?
celebrate today is the first Sunday of Christmas. Almighty God, who wonderfully created us in your own image, and yet more wonderfully restored us through your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that, as he came to share in our humanity, that we may share the life of his divinity, who is alive and reigns with us in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. That's Norma now to come and give us our reading. Jesus presented in the temple. When the time came for the purification rites required by the law of Moses, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord. A pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel and the Holy Spirit was on him. It had been revealed to him by the Spirit, that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all nations, a light for revelation to the Gentiles, and the glory of your people, Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed her and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophet Anna, the daughter of Penuel of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was eighty-four. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Norma, for that reading. Just a moment of prayer as we listen. 
useful to try to understand what God might be saying to each one of us through that. Dear Father, we thank you for your holy word. We thank you for the birth of Jesus this time that we celebrate. Lord, help us to be a people who do not keep Jesus as a baby, but as a grown man. Man who experienced what we experience, man who died for our sins. Let this be a time of encouragement. In Jesus' name, Amen. amen. So that reading from um, the Norma beautifully shared with us from Luke 2, 22, 40, um, the presentation in the temple of Simeon and Anna. You know, if anybody had said, even this time last year, that we would face a pandemic, be unable to touch or even see some of our loved ones. And some of us would fear leaving our homes, going to work, or the shops. We would have said, without doubt, impossible. Impossible. The fear, the uncertainty, and the challenges that we have faced this year, and yet continue to face, I know would have seemed insurmountable. And yet, here we are. We've managed it so far, and are still just about carrying on, carrying on. And we're still waiting in hope that things will get better. Well, one thing that we know, the God that we worship, a faithful God, Things will get better. Things will get better. They will get better in the next few months. Without doubt, they will. We need to pray and give thanks for the vaccines. We need to be bold about those. Because they will make a difference. But they're not everything that we need. I read over Christmas uh, about an uh, um, a American preacher, quite famous actually, and um, quite stupid as well, because he said, we don't need the vaccine because Jesus is our vaccine. What a stupid man to say that. Jesus isn't my vaccine. He's my saviour. That's who Jesus is. Vaccines are wonderful, but they're man-made. They don't answer for everything. So Jesus isn't the vaccine. Jesus is my saviour. And thank God for that. You know, Simeon and, and Anna in the story that Norma's kind of, kind of read to us this morning, were waiting for the promise of better things to come, weren't they? Their people had gone through great trials and tribulations and they were waiting for a, a new king, a saviour. And now in their old age, they've been waiting a lifetime. Anna had been fastidiously looking after the temple, preparing herself for greater things. Simeon had been waiting all his life for the one who had been promised in the servant song of Isaiah 49. A light to reveal God to the nations. And now finally, after a lifetime of waiting, that light had arrived, unexpectedly, yes, in the form of Jesus. One of the things that we've not been able to do in this whole pandemic as we come together as a worshipful people is sing together. In church terms, I really do hope, earnestly hope and believe that by Easter we will be singing in this place. And I would love, and I would share what Claire had written here, that we sing, Thine be the glory. Wouldn't that be a wonderful first song to sing in this church together? Thine be the glory. Jesus is not my vaccine, he's my saviour, and to him be the glory. 
as the loudest and most helpful, uh, help, heartfelt song as we celebrate, yes, medicine and vaccine. But you know, just at the moment, it does feel like, as Claire is reading here, that all we can sing is, I'm still standing, in brackets, just. But we can still listen to music. And it took, Claire put here, it took her by surprise, this online carol service that we had. It was last week, wasn't it? It was last week, wasn't it? Um, and how uplifting that was. I was sat over there. I've got to say, I didn't just find it surprising and uplifting. It made me cry. I sat there, and thankfully, I felt, thankfully, that nobody could see. Not that there's anything wrong with crying, but I cried. I cried when I saw Rosa Clark. I cried when I saw Jonathan. And they read. Why did I cry? Because I know then what I miss. I miss them. I miss people. That's what makes the difference in God's kingdom. Jonathan reading. I missed him. I'd forgotten almost about Jonathan. He even had his hair cut. He was like reading. And he wore his Christmas jumper. But Rosie Clark, God, I miss Rosie Clark. She's so important in my life as a Christian. She doesn't know what she's done over the years as words of encouragement for me. And I miss her. And I can't wait for the time, and I know she says she can't wait for the time, that she will be able to be in this place safely and worship with us. It was amazing. I didn't really know how it was going to work last week. It was probably the most powerful thing in the last nine months or so. And I don't think either that it was a coincidence that going back to the reading, that in the temple that Simeon and Anna met with the Saviour they'd both been waiting for for so long. Because the temple was the symbol at that time where heaven and earth met. And in this case, the tangible expression of God's promise to his people. Jesus, born humbly in a stable, was coming to reign in a way that no other king had done before. A stable that was different from that temple, wasn't it? But still one where heaven and earth met. But the biggest difference with this king, he wasn't asking for money, status, deeds. This king, this saviour, was only asking for one thing, and he asks for it now, today. He wants to let us dwell in his hearts. Emmanuel. In that uh, verse, the, the, the carol that we heard, in the last verse, it says this, What can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I was a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him, give him my, give my heart? Giving our heart, following Jesus to the manger, to the cross, to the resurrection, that is our gift of Christmas. It is our only mission. And it is for us to choose to accept or to reject. So let Jesus be our gift today. Let us receive him. Let us take him into our hearts. And no virus, no lockdown can prevent you from singing that song. What can I give him? Give him my heart. And you know, as I heard Last week, as a sort of recall, hearing and seeing people and missing them deeply, painfully. You know, it just reminded me that some of my Christianity 
of things that I call my Christianity. We find as we scratch the surface, it isn't very much of Christianity. Sometimes it's just our local religious cultures that we fear that we've missed. But thankfully for me, and I hope for you, there is a, a new awakening, a longing to clarify what is of Christ in my life and in our lives together. What is essential gospel? What is historical or denominational accidents? Because one of the questions we need to ask, the church at large, but us ourselves, is are we looking for fresh reasons to leave the, comfort of, the comfortable lifestyles that we've lived before the pandemic? and tell our neighbours the good news. Well, shame on us, shame on me, if it takes a pandemic to get us to that point. Why wasn't Jesus' command enough? As the Father sent me, so I am sending you. So we're going to hear now um, Liz Burton sing um, a, a version, it is a version of that uh, carol, isn't it? It's called Stannington, yes, and um, the words will come up on, on the screen. As we, as we hear Liz sing and read those words, let us reflect on what God is saying to us at this moment.
Shall we stand and affirm our faith? We say together, you know. We believe in Jesus, who at Christmas. Exalted him in the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. Lord, we pray for people in this village and in this city who have lost their jobs due to COVID. Lost their livelihoods. Lost their identity. Perhaps lost their dignity. Be with them, Lord. Help us to be a church that responds appropriately. Us to be individuals that respond appropriately. We pray for our children. We pray for protection against whatever COVID might be doing to their minds and their growth and their developments. It's interruption to their normal way of life, to education, to interacting with grand and grandparents. Pray for people in this church at the moment who are not well, both physically, emotionally, and mentally. Be with them. You are a healing God. Lord, as we think of the coming year, 2021, Lord, we pray that it is better than that which is going. We give you thanks for the science of vaccine. Lord, we pray that as the next few months these vaccines roll out, that the right people will get them. There will be no shortage of provision. We pray again 
against bad news, fake news, real fake news. When we start New Year, Lord, we pray that we as a church and understand that our calling in this place afresh. We'll close our intercessions with the Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, Say it together. Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary, the Jesus, worshipped by angels, the believed throughout the world, exalted to the highest heavens. Blessed be God, our strength and our salvation. Now. Now.